my first communications class in college was taught by the late Professor George McLeod, who was the epitome of a crazy genius. We all knew that he was extremely intelligent, full of knowledge and wisdom, but his hair was crazy, and so was his methods. And we all loved to make fun of it, but we all knew that we were going to learn something while spending time with him. The first day of the class, he assigned us the homework assignment of watching the nightly news. And we all had to watch one specific channel that he felt was unbiased and that the next day he would come in to test us giving us a multiple choice quiz to see if we were actually watching the news. And the first day of the assignment, I went home and I turned on the six o'clock news and the first two stories were about a family that was in a house that burnt down. And the second story was about a young girl who was attacked by a grizzly bear. I didn't make it to the third story because I turned off the TV and I've never intentionally turned on the news again. Dr. McLeod felt that it was important for young, educated professionals to be well-informed citizens. He felt like that was what we owed to society so that way we would be better leaders and be able to hold our leaders accountable. And I know that the news isn't supposed to be sugar-coated, and I know it's not supposed to relay only the good things, but I realized as a communications professional, and I, I should explain that those who go to school for communications end up in one of two tracks, usually. One, they end up the, on the journalism route, or two, they end up on the marketing route. And what happens is, on the journalism front, whether it's uh, radio, newspaper, or TV, what happens is that the journalism route uses information, we hope, to inform the public and hold our leaders accountable. But in order to make this profitable, they have to sell advertising space to people like me, marketers. And we've gotten to a place where we have over-indexed in the attention economy, where it's about clicks and it's about views and it's about viewership. So that way you could sell space in between the lines or in between commercial breaks. One of the best ways to captivate attention is to leverage humans' innate fight or flight systems where we, at the most psychological and physiological levels, tune in to the things that threaten our very existence. And this is why the news over indexes on the bad news. Well, the good news is that we don't have to rely on traditional forms of media any longer to reach massive, massive amounts of people. The case study that comes to mind in recent, in the, the most recent weeks is John Krasinski, who's most recognized for being Jim from the office of starting his news channel, Some Good News, four weeks ago. And on March 25th, John started Good News. And four weeks later, he has 2.9 million subscribers and over 42 million views on his channel. Now, 
to give you some context on what that means, uh, I think it would be appropriate to compare that to traditional news shows that have been operating for close to a decade now. I looked up the top five news channels and um, luckily for me to make the comparison easy, the top five shows, uh, the, the top five news shows come from Fox News. Uh, Sean Hannity um, is number one overall. And um, the his show combined with the four other top five shows on Fox news, they account for, um, when I, I, you look at the numbers, they, uh, they provide the numbers quarterly. So the first quarter of 2020, which it was January through March on average, the top five news shows reached 3.6 million views. Okay. So let's look at the numbers again. John Krasinski's Some Good News has reached over 42 million views in just under 30 days. And in the first 90 days, the number one show, Sean Hannity, reached 4.2 million views. So John Krasinski's YouTube channel has reached... 10 times the amount of the number one news channel, Sean Hannity, in one third of the time. Um, and when you combine the top five, right? So let's see. Uh, the top five combined is roughly uh, 16 million views. And that was in 90 days. John Krasinski uh, has almost doubled that in 30 days. Looking at the amount of employees, um, from what I can tell, John Krasinski is the only employee, and I use employee in air quotes. Uh, when I look at the, uh, the, the, the number of average of um, cast members uh, to produce uh, Fox's top five new shows, I'm getting about 10 employees. And that's that's just uh, employees on the set. That's that's not including um, it's, not, it's not including um, the administrative employees who work at Fox News um, who are in the marketing department, the HR department, uh, the accounting department. Um, we're just counting the members on the set. And when we were looking at the cost, um, in comparison, some good news, uh, when I look at John Krasinski's setup, um, from his, uh, Facebook page banner, he's got two iPhone tripods. He's got an iPhone. He's got a MacBook pro he's got um an a, a, a normal office desk with two reams of paper that he puts his laptop on um and when you look at those numbers i'm getting about uh, anywhere from two thousand to three thousand dollars in equipment for him to make his tv show i wasn't able to get all of the information on what it costs to um, produce one of the top Fox news shows. Um, but for comparison, I, I looked up, uh, the annual sal salary, uh, for the, the, the newscasters for each show. And just for reference, um, it's a wide range of your annual salary. Sean Hannity, who has the, the number one news channel, uh, gets paid $36 million a year. Um, and then looking at uh, one of the newscasters on the five, uh, the lowest paid uh, newscaster receives about a million dollars a year. So it's a wide gap, but on average, I'm coming up of with about thirteen and a half million dollars uh, for uh, the newscasters on the top five 
Fox News shows. So, um, again, this is only the salary of of the newscasters. This doesn't include the the amount it costs to lease a studio, the amount of uh, production costs of equipment and lighting and makeup. This doesn't include the ad- administrative costs that go into distributing the show itself. So on average, it's costing um, Fox News about 13, over 13 and a half million dollars to produce these shows. And it has cost John Krasinski between 2000 to $3,000. So what's the point of all this? The point is that it costs tremendously amount, uh, a tremendous less amount to reach a lot more people than in, de- in the decades past. We live in, in er- an era of mass disruption and mass distribution through new forms of media. And I can't promise you that you're going to become John Krasinski by just starting up a YouTube channel with your iPhone. But the point is, is that these platforms are relatively cheap and in some cases absolutely free to express your good news and to express how you're seeing the world and helping us get a better vantage point as a result. So I want to give you some resources that you could deploy on, on packaging up the news that, that you want to share with us all. Uh, for instance, the Lewis Lee podcast, uh, my website, my blog, it is all hosted uh, from Squarespace. And I pay about $155 a year to run S- Squarespace. And Squarespace is a drag and drop interface, which means if you are able to attach a file in an email, you'll be able to create a, a, a simple website with a few clicks on Squarespace. It cost me 155 bucks um, to use the platform, and then for my do- domain name, lewislee.net, it cost me about $20 a year. Now, if that's something that's uh, of non-interest to you, there's other ways you can start a website for free. You can go to, you can use sites like Wix, that's W-I-X dot com. They have free options for you. And then there's also uh, free WordPress um, options where you can start a a website for free as well. Um, If radio and video is something of interest to you to get um, your information or uh, however the stories or the information that you want to express, if you want to do it in a audio form or video form, uh, for free, you can use sites like SoundCloud, where you can just upload an audio file of, of something that you've record on, recorded on your iPhone. Um, you can upload it to SoundCloud for free. Um, or you can record yourself with a, a smartphone and upload it directly to YouTube for free and share the link as a result. Um, if the audio or video format is not something that you're comfortable with, uh, you may be more comfortable with the written word. Um, For me, I do a lot of writing when it comes to social media or blogging or setting up the copy for um, the podcast. I use a an editor called Grammarly. Now I have the premium version of Grammarly, which is kind of like a word check on steroids. It crawls, um, your, any site that you're using on, on your browser in which I use Chrome. And it looks for not only spelling errors, but it also looks for grammatical errors and gives you, um, suggestions using artificial intelligence. Now I pay about I think it's like 120 or 150 a year for that. 
uh, because I use it on a daily basis. Um, but they do have a free version which uh, gives you um, spell check and uh, grammar updates. Um, so use that if you want to do some writing. It integrates not only um, on, on the browser, but it integrates uh, with Microsoft Word um, or and or your email. Um, but more importantly, uh, if you want to get your written work out there to people, the YouTube version of the written word is medium.com and you can sign up there for free. You can start blogging on that and getting your thoughts and articulating them in the written form and sharing a link that way. On the creative side, when, um, you want to use photography or you want to use imagery to socialize the links that uh, you develop. There's um, two platforms that I love and that I use, and both of them are free uh, with, of course, premium options available to it. The first one is Canva. I use Canva for um, any blog creative that I use, uh, whether that's on my website or on Medium. And then um, for social media creative, I use Adobe Sparknote, which is a, an app that you can get on iPhone or Android. Um, all of the resources that I've mentioned, there are free versions available to you. And there's no one who is keeping you back from expressing yourself or sharing your good news except for you. And now, more than ever, we need people who are willing to contribute their good news um, in a world that is being saturated on the traditional media side of information that is used to uh, stir up fear and divisiveness. It's very ironic that... Um, some of the most traditional media uh, platforms who are spending the most money uh, to use fear mongering and, and rightfully so there is things to fear, uh, but over indexing on uh, fear mongering when we have resources at our hands with no gatekeepers to distribute not only the challenges that we face, but the opportunities that we all have to look forward to. Um, the good news doesn't have to be dependent on Fox News or CNN News. The good news, not only for us, is also available to be distributed by us. And with that, I thank you for your work. I thank you for your contribution. I hope you're staying well. I hope you're staying healthy. And I hope you have a great week. Thank you for your time.